Hey everybody, good to be with you today. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for being a part of the message today. I hope you're doing well. Um, I want to share just a word with you today, just a quick word. Um, and if you were with us in our, um, our previous service, the Father's Day service, I spoke a little bit about what I'm going to share with you today in this video. And uh, I hope um, I hope it's a blessing to you. Maybe there were some of you that weren't able to be here or for various reasons for, for different things. And so uh, that was one of the reasons I wanted to um, wanted to share this this message with you in the video form. So I hope, I hope, I really do hope it's a blessing to you in that. And uh, so uh, it's called, I entitled it, A Walk to Remember. And uh, where I pull that message from today is Psalm 1, and really verses 1 through 6, but really our focus is going to be on the first verse today, verse 1 of that, Psalm 1. But I want to read the, the first three verses for you, uh, 1 through 3, with our focus really on that first verse. And then we'll, uh, we'll have prayer, and we'll get right into the message. And thanks again for being here. Uh, listen to what David says here in this psalm. He said, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in, in his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. Let's pray. God, thank you again for this day. Thank you, Lord, for letting us uh, have this, uh, this Lord, this uh, means to be able to present this word in your uh, in a way that can reach others, Lord, besides just here at the church, God. But we can share this uh, all over. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, bless it, bless this message, bless this word, God, and that any and all that are listening to it, God, will hear from you. Nothing about me, God, they'll hear from you and your word. And, and God, just be, uh, just be blessed by what you're going to speak to them today. God, what a powerful word that it is today from the Old Testament, Lord. And I thank you so much, God, for what you're doing for us, how you're blessing us. And God, we just continue to pray, pray for those out there that need our prayers. God, there's still some folks that can't be here with us at church. So, Lord, we lift them up to you today. We don't want them to ever feel like we're not thinking about them because we are. And we thank you for them. So, Lord, just bless this word today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 1 and verse 1. Listen to that verse again. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. You know, and one of the things that really got my attention in this verse, um, you know, I, I think about, now really, again, I had mentioned that this was a, a message that I used in our Father's Day service and really kind of applying to our our dads and and the leaders of our families but moms too and and all of those that need to hear this word uh, just in a way of advice and encouragement uh, you know it's real important for us I think if we you know I, I don't know if you were like me but as a kid you know you just live for the moment you just do things and, and you know a lot of times um, your mom or your dad would say, you need to think about your actions. You need to think about what you're doing uh, because it's fixing to get you in trouble or it's fixing to hurt you or whatever. And I remember those conversations a lot of times. And, and as hard-headed as I was, uh, it usually took me uh, going ahead and trying it anyway and getting myself in trouble and usually getting a whipping out of the deal. But uh, um, it is important today for all of us to think about, at least consider, where, uh, what each and every action we take today, where it's going to lead us to and where we're going to be. Now, there's no way possible that we can know that completely. We can't know where we're going to wind up or what's going to become of this decision I make today. But we can use some, some prayer and we can seek the Lord and we can use some wisdom in that way and seek His wisdom help him, and get Him to help us to make some good decisions. 
We need to think about our actions. I mean, just like my mom and dad used to tell me, you need to think about what you're going to do. And, uh, you know, you can't always know the end result of that, but we, we, can, we, can, we can get a pretty good idea, I guess. And we can we get a really good idea if we seek out the Lord. You know, in physics, there's something called cause and effect. And really what it, what it means, what it basically means is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. For whatever you do, there's something that's going to come back, something that's going to happen as a result of that. You know, in life, the same is true. Um, you know, each action I take, each decision I make, and each, each thing I do uh, will have an effect or a reaction in my life. Now, that can be positive, of course, but there's a lot of negatives in that idea. And so that's really what I think, you know, David here is trying to get his listeners to understand. There are some results of your decisions. You need to be wise in your decision making. You need to seek the Lord in those things. Um, I, I'll give you some examples here. I, I mean, and, and you're going to think I'm old fashioned in what I, I say in this, but. You know, when you think about decisions long, long time ago, you know, I always say this, I said this to my kids when they were growing up, you know, every alcoholic had to begin with that first sip, that first drink. You say, well, brother, boy, that's going to extremes. Well, it's true though, isn't it? Every person that has an addiction problem for cigarettes or tobacco had to start with the first cigarette. He had to start with the first dip, the first chew. Those that I mean that is that's a fact, and so it's real important in in all of life uh, to consider this step. What I, what I'm fixing to do? How will it affect me in the days ahead? And I don't know how many times I've had people in my office who said, "Oh my goodness, I never dreamed I would have trouble with this, or I'd be dealing with this. I wish I'd had never started that or that." And I've had that over and over again. The paths you decide to take today will have a profound effect on your life tomorrow. And that's really what I'm trying to say. And I think that's what David is saying here in, in what he's saying. But it's especially true, you know, and again, we talked about this from a father's point of view. Boy, dad, uh, your decisions you make <laughs> for your family, for yourself, is, has a huge impact on the future and the tomorrows of your family and yourself. And so be very aware of that and, and uh, seek the Lord in that. So, uh, you know, that's really about what the context of what this is talking about. Making wise decisions, making good decisions as best you can. And again, you can't know everything. We're not God. But we can seek God to help us to make those decisions. So let's look at what David said. And uh, he said, how blessed is the man who does not, or the person who does not, what does he say? Walk, walk in the counsel of the wicked. Well, what does that mean? Literally take, take that advice of the wicked and then make your path, make your decision, make your directions accordingly. Believe it or not, the path I choose for myself today will one day lead to a destination for my life tomorrow. Um, I, I know you've heard it. I, I've heard it so many times, but uh, it said, you know, uh, in a, in a, uh, somebody getting ready to go down an old dirt road in a, in a pickup truck or whatever. It says, it's, and there's a sign there that says, pick your ruts wisely because you're gonna be in them till the end of the road. And so the same is true in life. Be careful which ruts you pick, which routes you pick in your life. Um, it is uh, wise that you choose and, and seek the Lord in that. It does make a difference which path you take. It does choose uh, choose the right for, for right now. Um, if I have a certain destination in mind, then I choose, I choose, I've got to choose a path that will take me in that direction. But another aspect of this is, is we need to consider where each step we take uh, will eventually lead to. Um, you know, and there's gonna be days, you know, where we come to a crossroads and we come to a wide road in life and we just don't know which direction to take. And it's gonna be, Lord, is it this one, is it that one? 
God, you got to help me because I, I just don't know. And, and with the Lord's help, you'll choose a direction and you'll choose a path. And I think the Lord will, will lead you down that path in whichever way he leads you to go. But, um, you know, um, and we'll talk about more here in a minute. But just because you choose a certain direction doesn't mean you have to stay there if the Lord leads you away from that or he shows you that it was a bad decision. You know, uh, you know. do you think there are people, I, I know the obvious answer to this, do you think there are people who have reached a place in their lives and, and, and who might wish they had chosen different paths in the beginning of their lives? I mean, you think about it. I mentioned it a while ago. Alcoholics that has just have been consumed, their life has been wrecked and ruined because they just had to have alcohol. Cigarettes lung disease and cancer and all of the problems that are associated with that. If they'd have just left those things alone. And other things, drugs and, you know, even all the way, you know, to, uh, to uh, sexual problems and different things like that. Children being war born out of wedlock, um, you know, broken homes because of sexual problems, you know, uh, not being faithful within marriages. Uh, where could those things have it, what could have happened if they would have made better choices there? Well, David said, how blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, that you don't take that counsel and that you move forward in it. Uh, you, you need to be aware of that. It is also very important to make sure you are getting the very best counsel possible as you walk through this life. Uh, questions are going to come up throughout your life, absolutely through your walk on this earth. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with seeking good godly counsel. But be careful who you choose your counsel from. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it's funny how people are. You know, people wanna uh, make their particular situation and their decision and sometimes their sin, okay, who do they choose to get advice from? People are doing the same thing they're doing. And we'll tell them, no, buddy, it's going to be okay. You don't worry about what those people say. Don't worry about the, what the, uh, the Bible says. That, you know, that's, that's old. That's out of date. That's this, that, and the other. I'm going to tell you, God's word never changes. And uh, we need to be aware and be careful who we get our advice from. You know, the worst person in the world to get your advice from when you're lost on a road and trying to figure out where you're going is a person who's lost on the same road you're on. You need to find somebody that may have been on that road a long time ago and got off of it, and they can give you some decent advice. Maybe that's who you need to seek out for your counsel. David goes on to say, he says, not only does he say how blessed is the man or the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but then he goes on to say, how blessed is the person who does not stand or take, uh, stand in the path of sinners. You know, someone once said, uh, this is a silly saying, but someone once said, um, you know, I don't really know where I'm going, but I sure am making good time. You know, um, there's a lot of folks in life that are just just going. They just don't really know what direction they're going, what how they're going to get there or, or what they're doing or whatever. But they, they're going to go as fast as they can to get to whatever's at the end of that choice. You know, there are occasions in all of our lives when we take a look at the direction we're going, we look at the situation we're in, and we realize this is not a good situation. This is not a good direction for my life and for my family. And so maybe we had to, uh, we had gotten just a little off track in life. Maybe we made some bad decisions. Maybe we made some terrible decisions. And you know, the key here is adjustment. God. I've made some bad mistakes. I've taken my family in some wrong directions. I've made some foolish mistakes in my life. God, can you show me where I should be and what I need to be doing? And God will do that. God is absolutely about second chances and, and other, other chances in life. So it would be absolutely ridiculous for any person to be aware that they're going in the wrong direction and never do anything about it. And I talked about being on an airplane the other day. You know, if your pilot just said, hey, we're going a little, we're a little off course, you know, and it's not a big deal. You know, it is a big deal. 
You know, if you're up in the air and you're going five, 600 miles an hour and you're off course for 30 to 30 minutes or an hour, you're way off course by the end of that time. So it is important to make adjustments in the flight course. And it's true in our life as well. David's advice is not to stand in the paths of sinners. Those people who are missing the mark in in, when it comes to God in those decisions. And, and he mentions one other thing here. He says, also, how blessed is a person who doesn't sit in the seat of scoffers. Now, the word seat here literally means dwelling place. Somebody who has, has made bad decisions, maybe chose a bad direction, maybe they, they, they're on a bad course, but they just don't care. They've decided to sit there and just and sit it out. They've just pride maybe gets in the way. They can't admit that they're wrong. They won't make a, a adjustments to their course. And so David says, you know, it's it, how blessed is a person who doesn't do that, who doesn't sit in the seat of scoffers. Yes, Lord, I've made some mistakes, and my goodness, I'm in a terrible place in my life. God, can you help me out of this? How blessed is the person who does that? David would say. You know, seat literally means dwelling place. If we want to experience the great blessings that God has for us, we should not take up residence. We should not take up root with scoffers. Scoffers are those people who mock God, who could care less about God and his truth. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you need examples of that in our day and time, you just need to watch the news for a few minutes. There are people out there, there are groups, and they've just come together to make fun of God. They're attacking God. They're attacking, you know, they're taking down patriotic statues and all kinds of stuff. But they're coming after the, uh, to the spiritual aspect of life now. They're wanting to take out stained glass windows of churches because they offend. You can see them from the outside. They're wanting to take down Christian statues because they're offensive to those out there that they consider, you know, those oppressive to their lives. And I'm telling you, God is not oppressive. God is about freedom, freedom from our sin and from our foolishness and from the uh, terrible decisions we make. But that's a whole nother sermon for another day. Um, it frustrates me. Uh, I have to be. Uh, I have to be honest with you. The, the things I'm seeing in the news today are very frustrating. Um, but um, God says. I mean, David says here. Listen, how blessed is a man who doesn't sit in the seat of scoffers? Those who mock God. Um, you know, sometimes you just need to keep your nose out of conflicts and out of all of those things. Maybe you've made some bad mistakes in your life. Maybe you've done that. And when it comes to choosing good and right paths for your lives, maybe, maybe you've even stood way too long where you're at. And you're just you, in your poor decisions. Your pride just won't let you change. But I'm going to tell you something. David says how blessed is the man who does not stay there. Uh, you do not let anyone tell you that it's where you have to stay. It is not where you have to stay. You can move away from that foolishness, move away from that sinful life, and ask God to bring you out of it. The longer a person stays in a place like that, in a, in a wrong and sinful path, in the company of mockers of God, the harder it is for that person to come out of that, to be uprooted from that. And uh, uh, they're tough. You know, you think about it. The longer someone's in an addiction, someone the longer somebody's in a bad, uh, they've made a bad, foolish mistake in doing something, starting something a long time ago. Maybe it is alcohol. Maybe it is tobacco. Maybe it is cigarettes. Maybe it is uh, uh, drugs, whatever it is. Maybe it's sexual uh, promiscuity, whatever it is. The longer someone's in that, the harder it is to come out. But I'm going to tell you this, God can still do it. And so we need to uh, we need to trust God to pull us out of that if we're in that. Just trust him. Um, you know, the person who stands and walks in the Lord and puts his faith in the Lord, no matter where you are in this life, when you make the decision to follow Jesus Christ and you follow God, God can then root you in himself and you can become so strong in God and in his help. When we're rooted in the Lord, the scripture is pretty specific. In fact, this scripture is pretty specific. There isn't anything that can uproot us. 
Uh, we're like that tree in this verse 3 that it talks about. Uh, and he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in the season. And its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. So why? Why should we seek after God's way? Because I'm going to tell you, God's way is the only way. The world's telling us all kinds of nonsense today. We got to tear up and we got to cause chaos and we got to wreak havoc on the world and just tear up everything. God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is nobody who comes to the Father, who comes to forgiveness except through me. Have you trusted him today? Have you trusted Christ as your Lord and your Savior today? Wherever you are in your life, whatever decisions you've made somewhere along the path, maybe good, maybe bad, but maybe you're saying, oh, I can't forgive me. I've done some horrible things. I'm here to tell you that the cross of Calvary, the cross of Jesus Christ, covered it all. And I don't care where you are in your life, in the decisions you've made, good and bad. Maybe you're living a sinful life right now. Maybe you're so far away from where you need to be. Maybe you've broken families, broken homes. Maybe you've broken relationships. Maybe you, your body's just devastated by the sin you've chosen in your life. Maybe, maybe your body's just racked by it. You're addicted to your sin and your problem that you have, the decisions you made in your life. God says, I will forgive you if you will but trust me. He died on an old rugged cross to make that happen. We've had a sin problem ever since the Garden of Eden. It's getting worse. I mean, it's per it seems to be permeating the world worse and worse every single day. It seems to be becoming more and more obvious every single day. But you know what? The same truth is, is still the truth of today. Christ died for sinners. And he can and will forgive you your sins if you will trust him. He has paid for them. You just have to accept and believe that today. Have you done that? I beg you to choose Jesus Christ today if you have not. I want to pray for us today, and I'm going to close us out in this. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. Choose Christ. Choose Christ and pick that path for your life. It will make a huge difference in your direction, in your life, in your destination in this life. Let me pray for us. Lord God, I just thank you today for all your blessings. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for being so good to us. Thank you, God, that you are forgiving, that you are a God of second chances. God, that you, you don't give up on us, Lord. That your cross absolutely covered every single sin that we can possibly imagine and do. And Lord, we do it. The human race is just a sinful people, Lord. But God, you are a God of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood that he shed for us. Thank you, God, for his life that he gave for us and forgave us our sins. God, thank you that he defeated death on the third day. So we don't have to be afraid of death anymore, Lord. And Lord, my hope is not in this world. God, it is not. God, I have placed, I have begged you, Lord, to help me to keep my eyes on you and to place my trust entirely in you for everything. And Lord, I pray you would help us in that today. God, you're an awesome God. You're a loving God. You're a long-suffering God. Lord, you're a patient God. You're a merciful God. Thank you, Lord, for being that for me and for all of us. We pray that you would just lead us and direct us and touch anyone out there, Lord who has not accepted and trusted you as their Lord and Savior. I beg you to do that. Lord, I pray for my nation. I pray for my leadership here in this world. I pray for our people. I pray for the chaos that is going on, Lord. And uh, I just pray, Lord, that you would just touch and change hearts where you, where you will. And I know you'll do it. And God, just do a work as only you can do. I love you today, Lord. Thank you, God, for your word. And thank you for this time together. We pray in Jesus' name. I thank you so much for listening. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Look forward to talking to you again real soon. Thank you so much. God bless.